Good morning, friends. Great to see you today. I hope you're having a great morning. Uh, Excited to get into God's Word with you once again. And you might recall that we are working our way through um, the first, uh, Peter's first epistle, Peter 1. And uh, today we find ourselves in chapter 1, verses uh, 13 through 19. If you have your Bible, would love to uh, have you to have that in front of you. It's good to have God's Word in front of us as we study it so that you can read it for yourself. You can see the words. Um, Maybe that sticks a little bit better than just having some guy reading it to you. So um, as we we think about this passage that we're going to look at today, it talks about taking action and preparing to take action. And what does that look like to prepare um, to be God's hands and feet and His voice to be people who are ready for the return of Christ. So let's see what Peter has for us as we get into his his letter here. Starting in verse 13, Peter says, therefore. Now you might recall Peter's talking when he says, therefore, that's a transition. He has given us some command prior to that. And he's saying, in light of this command, here's what I want you to do. So if you recall from our last lesson, Earlier in chapter 1, Peter was talking about the fact that we should be joyful and rejoicing as we anticipate the return of Christ and what that looks for us, what that looks like for us, and rejoicing the fact that we can know him personally, even though we don't see him, even though he's not physically right in front of us, uh, we can still be in relationship with him. So he starts out, verse 13, therefore, so in light of that, therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on him as father who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. Boy, there's a lot of good stuff here for us to consider. A lot, man. We could probably spend... We could spend many, many lessons just digging through some of this, our very rich text from Peter. But we're going to do it here in just a few minutes, so take it for what it's worth. So verse 13, therefore, preparing your minds for action. And when you think about preparing your mind for action, what does that look like? What does that mean? Uh, Maybe some of you have been... Uh, watching the documentary that's been on ESPN called The Last Dance about the Bulls and most specific, more specifically about Michael Jordan, who many would argue was, from a mental standpoint, the most elite athlete to ever compete. Maybe not, just, not even in just basketball, but in any sport, mentally, that he was stronger and that he was more determined to win than any other athlete who has walked the planet. Some might argue that. I don't know if you would, but some may argue that. But what we see in that documentary is that Jordan would consistently prepare his mind for action. And what did that look like? What did that mean? It meant that in practice, he was incredibly sharp mentally, pushing his teammates, sometimes maybe a little too far, but pushing his teammates and, and, and getting them to a level that he felt they needed to be at in order to win championships. It also meant that for himself, he had to uh, mentally prepare for the physical toll that would be be exacted on him as the leader of the Bulls. So for you and me, preparing our minds for action, that means we need to be mentally prepared to act on behalf of Christ. And what does it say here? So that we can set our hope fully on the grace that will be brought to us at the revelation of Jesus so that we can be ready for when Jesus comes back. We can be ready for what the Lord calls us to do while we walk on this planet. 
And so preparing our minds means knowing our Bibles, knowing what Scripture says, understanding Scripture, studying it, being experts in God's Word. That is the best way for us to prepare our minds. Prepare our minds means that we also spend time in prayer, that we come before our Father, that we uh, reveal ourselves to Him, and that we ask Him to reveal Himself to us, not just through His Word, but through other believers, through creation, through teaching, whatever that may be. We certainly want uh, Christ to reveal Himself to us. So, prepare our minds for action. We're not preparing our minds to be apathetic. We're not preparing our minds to, um, you know, sit around, to be pew-sitters, so to speak. We want to be people of action. So he goes on here, um, down in verse 15. Be holy uh, as your Father in heaven is holy. Now, holiness is, boy, that is a difficult topic for us to deal with because being holy is being pure. And we strive for that. We certainly want to be holy before our Father. We want to be holy before Christ. Um, But that requires repentance. And that requires coming to the cross and asking for forgiveness. And it is only through what Jesus has done that we can be purified. Only by him can we be made holy once again. One other point here I want to make before we, before we uh, wrap up is um, in verse 14, Peter says, As obedient children, do not conform to the passions of your former ignorance. Former ignorance mainly refers to uh, before we knew Christ. When we were ignorant of what the truth was, we were ignorant of the gospel. And there was a behavior, there was a way that we would make decisions, there was a way that we would talk, there was a way that we would act, there was a way that we would treat people. Don't conform. He's encouraging us. As obedient children, as obedient to Scripture, we do not conform to those patterns. That might remind you of Romans, where Paul says, Do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by what? By the renewing of your mind. Very similar to what Peter is saying here to us, that there is a connection between mentally being prepared and mentally surrendering to Christ and mentally understanding Scripture and how that, how that uh, is manifest in our actions, how our actions follow that, what, how our mindset is and how we think and uh, what our minds are ready to do certainly produces action one way or the other. And Peter is encouraging us here to not conform to the passions of our former self. Finally, we get down to uh, verses 18 and 19. And why do we do this? Why do we want to prepare our minds for action? Why do we want to be obedient children, not conforming to the patterns of our former passion? Because as verse 18 says, knowing that we were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from our forefathers, we were not ransomed with with gold or silver. In other words, we were not purchased. Our salvation was not purchased with money, not with gold, not with silver, not with all the riches of the world. What was our salvation purchased with? You guys know this. Verse 19, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. Christ is worthy of our very best, gang. He's worthy of everything that we can possibly bring to the table. He is worthy of all that we are and have because he is the precious lamb. He has purchased us with his blood. And so we are his. And so let's be obedient children. Let's be sons and daughters that prepare our minds for action and that not only prepare our minds for action, but then we respond with action. After our mindset is correct, then our actions will follow. I hope that helps a little bit, that there's a nugget or two you can pull out of there. Um, I can't wait to see you guys in person. I hope that's very soon. I'm sure you do too as well. I'm sure you can't wait to get back with your friends and uh, get out and about, get back to uh, uh wired and and all the stuff that goes on at at church and and everything that comes with that someday that's going to come soon i hope (laughs) i hope it's really soon until then you guys take care i love you Uh, allison loves you she sends you her best and i know frank does as well we miss you guys so take care we'll catch you next week bye-bye